as I grew in my belief and I grew in my leadership status, my income grew. Right. So I said, okay, this must be the two things that are yeah. most important because it was nothing else. You've got to pay attention to what's working. Yeah. Any business that you're in or relationship that you're in, you've got to pay attention. What's working, what's not working. And I knew that belief was working for me, and I knew the leadership skills that I was applying, that that was working as well. And then now I said, okay, let me multiply it by teaching these two things yeah. to other people. And then it just, I mean, it just took off. Yeah. Are you ready? We're going to run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come from nothing at all? But every day you just want it all. Do you know what it's like every day facing your fear? But believing that your blessing is near. Do you know what it's like growing up broken than most? But still being devoted the most. Do you know what it's like? Yeah, that's what the journey's about. Yeah. Let me show you What's going on? This is Justin Owens, back with the Run to Play Show. We talk about all the top players when it comes to leadership, building a brand, communication, relationships from people that are doing it today. And uh, listen, I'm not going to lie, man. I'm excited. Uh, I got a person in the studio today that has truly impacted my life. Y'all should be post about it, talk about it. But I got my mentor in the room today, Mr. David Amenite. Hey, you I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I mean, I'm blessed. I'm saying you're in the room. <laughs> yes. Feeling good. Yes, uh, get, you know, I'm excited because, you know, obviously I have a unique position to be able to hear your mind and how you think and you know lead uh, a lot of the times but a lot of people don't so you know get a chance for people to get a chance to know you yeah and uh, also to get some insight so i'm excited for some of the questions as well uh, so you know i don't know the best probably place to really start this is uh, <laughs> uh you know there's been a lot said about a high value man right you know? so like <laughs> if as a as a high value brother like yourself mm -hmm. I, what are some things that you would look for in, or what, what are some things that a woman should look to do to attract a high value man? What would you say? <laughs> wow. What a, what a way to start. Uh, well, I, I, I think, you know, high value man, I, and it was a, a young man that really made it famous. I know he's gone home to be with the Lord mm -hmm. um, about being a high value man, whatever that is supposed to mean. Mm -hmm. I, I think all of us are created in the image of God. Right. All right. And, but, at some point during life, we get distorted. Our DNA gets yeah. distorted, mm -hmm. and we lose our true identity right. as to who we really are. So, and that's what we uh, come a low vibration. Right. That's what. We <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go ahead. There, there y'all go with the low, <laughs> the low vibration. All right. Well, uh, so I believe everybody has that in them. Yeah. Um, and and what you really should look for is someone who's in tune with the spirit man of who they are, mm -hmm. not necessarily what you see on the outside, because people. Yeah. They think, okay, wait, if he has a nice car, if he has a nice home or whatever, then he's a high-value man. No, I think it's someone who really understands who he is on the inside from a spiritual standpoint, yeah. and then he's able to live that out. I would say that would probably be the first thing that a woman should really pay attention to. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Now, what do you pay attention to as a high-value man <laughs> in the lady? <laughs> Because they want to know. You know, they just like, all right, look, you know, this guy's done well. Like, how do I get on the radar? Uh, I think it's I for me I think it's peace. Yeah. You know, are, are you are you that person that you know we can go to for just some solitude and, and yeah. some peace where cuz I mean the world is, is is so busy today, you know. There's so much going on if you're running a business and you have a family, there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. You want to have that person that you can go to that's kind of like that safe place. Yeah. Um and I I would say that's probably at, at the top of my list. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Peace is, peace is big. Yeah. yeah. Peace is peace. Especially yeah, because you don't want drama in business yeah. and then drama at home. Yeah, it's no, like, you can't have that. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's tough. Where do, you, where do you go? Yeah, yeah. In the driveway. <laughs> right. You sit, <laughs> you sit in the driveway for a little while. So. <laughs> right. All right. Let, let me ask you this, because, you know, business, you've obviously done extremely well. We'll touch on that um, as well. But um, mental health has been, some, been something that I really honestly didn't pay attention to probably until the last two years. In fact, I was at your event. And I think Michelle Williams was talking about yeah. mental health. Yeah. And she raised her, she said, raise your hand if you deal with it. And it was like so many hands. I was like, wow, okay. Because right. my whole thing was just like, hey, mentally tough. Be mentally tough. Be mentally strong. Hey, right. shake right. it off. Change the state, you know. But they're, they're, it's real. It's a real thing. Very real. Um, and so how, how have you, like, or I don't even know if you if you have, but, like, how do you work with a person to say, okay, you got to work on your mental health. But also, you got to be able to focus on business, and, and how do I differentiate the fact? I mean, what, what do you say to a person that's kind of like dealing with that? Well, I mean, I think the first thing is you got to understand where that comes from. Yeah. When you say a person's mentality, yeah. what's the makeup of that? Mm -hmm. And then you've got to know 
what allows you to win that battle because the battle is really for your soul. Yeah. You know, all of us, there's three parts to really who we are. We have our spirit, we have our body, and then we have our soul. Hmm. And, and you know, the, the, the soul is the one that people lose the battle in. Mm -hmm. And because what happens is the, the body will always follow the mind. Right. The body will always follow the mind. So if, if the mind, and which is your soul, if the soul is, is going through a lot, then guess what? Your body's going to follow that. Right. But your soul has to be fed by your spirit man. So it's a lot of words. Mm -hmm. you know, that's why childhood traumas, a lot of times they go, we grow old with them. Right. And there's these words that have played in our heads over and over and over again. And if they're never resolved, uh, it can cause some major, major challenges. And we've seen that happen for so many people all around the world. But it's the, it's the spirit man that is winning the battle with the soul. Yeah. Or it's the enemy that's winning the battle with the soul. So that's a that's a daily battle that you've got to fight. Yeah, no, I agree. That, yeah. That's a big deal. And you know, I always tell people like, listen, if you, I think we live in a world now where sometimes it's easy to cover it up mm -hmm. and and hide it. And I think you know, I don't know if anybody watching this ever has been challenged with that, but I think you like definitely talk to somebody, yeah. right, about it. Um, but it's like what you said, you know, it's, it's it's watching your words and also the things that you're thinking because those those are those are big. Yeah, and. Uh, but I think also some of the things that can be challenging sometimes is social media makes it really hard <laughs> because you, you start comparing your success. You know, back in the day when you were broke, you just were broke. You didn't, you, didn't, you, didn't, you weren't broke and you saw somebody else living their life. Right, old right, right. You just in your room and, you, you know what I'm saying? So, like, how, have you ever dealt with, like, the comparison uh, thing on social media? Or, like, how, have you, how do you handle You know, it? it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time since I dealt with that because... Comparison, I think, is the thief of all joy. Mm -hmm. Because every time you compare, you're never comparing yourself to someone who's less than. You're always comparing yourself to someone who's greater than. Wow. wow. And, you know, right? So <laughs> That's you, a good point. Yeah, you, you're yeah. not. Because now what happens is you're looking at someone else that's in a different place in their life. But all, what I did was I started to pay attention to the sacrifice. Yeah. I didn't pay attention to the prize that they had. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know what was their sacrifice. Right. And that's what I wanted to learn. That's what I wanted. I didn't, I didn't emulate what they were actually, how they were living. I was emulating the sacrifices that they were making. Because wow. I knew that if I made those sacrifices, then in turn, I would get to where it is that I wanted to go. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's big. Emulate the Y'all hear that? Emulate the sacrifices because what a lot of mm -hmm. people wanted, they want the success, but yeah. it's like, I want to do that, but I, I don't want to miss any events. I don't want to miss any of stuff. I don't want to do any of the things you did, but I would still like to do that. And that and that, that becomes a challenge for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Your, your business uh, for the last at least decade and a half has been in the relationship business, yeah. right? Um, how, what are some of the things that have helped you to become really good with relationships, develop them over time? And you're a unique person because you've been able to do that, but... Uh, is very diverse. Like you're not, you don't just have relationships with just one type of person. How have right. you been able to do that? And is is there any kind of you know tips that you can share with somebody? Like man, I'm trying to build relationships and get out there. Yeah, it's. I think it's really looking at every relationship and say, well, what what do I bring to this relationship? Yeah. What type of value do I bring to it? And and that's what was so great about how we met. Yeah. You didn't come to me and say this is what I want. You said. Let me bring some type of value to your life, and that value was, you know, was a was a meal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was yeah. it was a meal at Houston's, and you know, I love the spinach dip. You know, yeah. I'll, hopefully, I'll get some royalties from that. But anyway, um, it was that. So if you find a way to always look to give, mm -hmm. right, to yeah. give first and receive later, I think that's how you you really start to create great relationships with people because people want to be around people that are givers. Yeah. They don't want to be around people that are takers. Yeah. So when I meet someone or I'm working with someone, it's how can I add value to this person's life? And in turn, I know that if I do that, and I, and I do that all around the world, enough value is going to come back to me. You always get to keep what you give. So if you give mm -hmm. enough value out there, you're going you're gonna to have value come back to you. So that's relationship is about value. Yeah. You know, the values that you bring to the table and, and what's being reciprocated back to you. I like that, yeah. You, you get a chance to keep what you give. Because yeah. we live in a world where, like, a lot of times people don't want to give. Everybody just want, like, I've met people, and they literally want to take from the time they meet you. Right. Like, you I'm like, okay, I know you want something. What is it? Because mm -hmm. at this point, like, it's there. <laughs> but how our relationship started, like, you know, I took you, obviously, well, first, I bought your audio. Mm, there you that go. That was the first step. There you right? go. And then I listened to the audio, got some 
uh, results from it. I was like, hey, listen, next time you're in Atlanta, mm-hmm. let's go to dinner. You didn't do it the first couple of times. I was like, listen, you got to <laughs> eat at some point, so let me know. Right. Um, but then we went to lunch, and we started to build a relationship. And for me, it was like, hey, man, I was like, all right, how can I do that? You're like, hey, listen, just let's just let it happen mm-hmm. organically. Like, right. Right? right. And and so that was unique, too, because, like, you didn't try to prop- position anything to me. You weren't trying to sell me anything. We didn't talk about business, really, until probably about three years after that. Right. And right. it was when I was ready to make it a, a move in business. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's a good lesson on both sides because sometimes, you know, the, the, the mentor can also need something to go want something in a relationship. But it's like, hey, this this is not the right time. Right. right? So I got to continue to be able to give. So I just want to say that because you, you really live by that. Mm-hmm. You do that. Now, I will say this. I don't know if the mill thing is going to work anymore these days, you know, but <laughs> try it. I think, I, you know, sometimes I think it's got to play it out nowadays. You know, get creative now. You know, maybe go to some... You know, go to a game or something, get creative with it. But but the thing is, is is how do I how do I uh, sew in or how do right. I, how do I, I put something into that relationship? Absolutely, to show I'm serious. Mm-hmm. You taught me that it was two things I needed to focus on to really win big, and that was belief and leadership. Yes. Where did that come from for you? Where did that philosophy come from? I think it came from a lot of failure. <laughs> That's where it came from, um, because it took me about five years of failing in order to have my first breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And when I had my first breakthrough, it was because I started to understand the power of belief. I started to understand the power of my words. I started to understand the power of visualization. I started to really understand the power of the emotional state that I was in. Mm -hmm. And then when I started to have success and started to have a bigger organization, then I knew, wait a minute, I have to study leadership because now I've got to lead these people that I have. So now I started really diving into leadership books by John C. Maxwell, who's a very close friend and mentor of mine now. And and what and what happened was as I grew in my belief and I grew in my leadership status, my income grew. Right. So I said, okay, this must be the two things that are yeah. most important. Because it was nothing else. You've got to pay attention to what's working. Yeah. Any business that you're in or relationship that you're in, you got to pay attention. What's working, what's not working. And I knew that belief was working for me and I knew the leadership skills that that I was applying, that that was working as well. And then now I said, okay, let me multiply it by teaching these two things yeah. to other people. And then it just, I mean, it just took off. Yeah, yeah. I love the way you keep things simple. Because that was, for me, I was like, I just need a framework. Like, really, that's how I run a play game about Because people were like, yo, what were you doing? I was like, man, I just ran a play. He mm-hmm. said, do this. I did this. He said, read the book. I read the book. You know what I'm saying? So I think sometimes people overcomplicate it. That it literally can't be that simple. No. I focus on my belief, right? And then and then I focus on leadership. When when you when you you said something earlier, you said it was about the words, the images, the emotions that you have around you. So yeah. I know one of the things you 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 taught, and I know we, um, we went to Bob Proctor event, and he was talking about I'm so happy and grateful now. Yes. So I hear that right, but so do you like just walk around the house and you say it? Do you are you thinking like what does that really look like in day to day life? You know, when you say okay, I'm visualizing my goal. Can you just kind of yeah. walk me through what that looks like for David? It, it's at this point, it's automatic. Yeah. It's not something I have to do consciously anymore. Yeah. It's something that's very subconscious at this point. And, and it took time for it to get there. But in the very beginning, I was very conscious of what I was writing down. As a matter of fact, I went back to it, where now every single day I write down one goal 10 times. Yeah. Literally 10 times a day. I've been doing this now since March 1st. Yeah. And it's not easy yeah. to do, right? Some days I do miss and, and I make up for it. If I'm on a flight, I make up for it, write it 40, 50 times. Yeah. And, but I'm writing it down all the time because you become what you think about. Mm-hmm. So I learned that if I put a goal out there and I make it important to my mind, that my mind will go and find the right resources, the right people. They'll put me in the right situations. Things will just start to work out for me mm-hmm. because I'm not worried about how I'm going to get there. I just know that I am getting there, yeah. right? And and because it's on my mind, because what it always says, out of sight, out of, out of mind. mind. So I keep it in front of me, right? By mm. writing it every single yeah. day. In I have sight. signs, right? I have I'm signs right. in my home. If you go in my bathroom, signs are in there. You go in my closet, signs are in there. You go in my kitchen, signs are in there. You go in the living room, signs. Are in there. So automatically, subconsciously, I'm seeing it. I'm not even seeing it consciously anymore. Yeah. But now when I walk into your home, mm-hmm. I, I see it. I'm walking up the stairs, and I see, I see the girl. I say, man, he's media. He's going to be on TV one day. And I, and I smiled. Yeah. I literally smiled because I said, he, it's really going to happen. Yeah. And when it does, I'm like, he's going to tell him. I actually wrote that down. Yeah. I saw it every single day. But here's the beauty, though, Jess, is when you start to see it work for other people. Right. Yeah. That's the joy that I get yeah. watching what's happening for you now is that you've taken those principles that I've learned, right? I didn't come up with them. They're 
thousands and thousands of years of, of, of principles that have been passed down, and now you've been able to teach it to other people. You've seen their lives change. Yep. That's the joy. Yeah. It's not the cars, the watches, and all that stuff. This stuff's great, but it's when you can see it in the lives of other people, you're like, okay, yeah, I know it works. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. No, I love that. I think that that, that was that was something big for me. Because I, I remember, I don't know if you remember, but I asked you about even, uh, you know, Science Against Rich, he talks about the impression of increase. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, what do you, like, how do you do that? You're like, you know, well, you, you're saying stuff to yourself while you're doing presentations. I am. You know, and I'm like... Okay, so let's talk about that. So, because all right, so now you're in front of the room, you're doing these presentations. So, right. what are some of the things you're saying to yourself? <laughs> I'm so about, I'm why? so happy and grateful now that I'm wealthy, I'm yeah. rich. I, you know, we had an event recently, and I, I I love the fact that when people walk into a room that we're in, they can feel a different energy. Yeah, and that is the impression of increase. People want to be around people that are uplifting. Yeah. But you can't be uplifting to others unless unless you've been uplifting to you. Right. <laughs> Everybody is so worried about impressing other people. No, you need to impress yourself. So the impression of increase is really not even for other people. <laughs> it's really for yeah. me. So now the position that I'm coming from, I'm coming from a place of increase. But I already know there's something on the inside of you that wants more, yeah. that needs more. And if I can now show you that I am more, you're going to automatically be attracted to it. It's, it's, I mean, I didn't come up with it. Wallace D. Waddles, he, yeah. he actually wrote that. And the impression of increase, gratitude, those two things are absolutely essential for you to win big in business and in life. Yeah. You have a great memory when it comes to a lot of stuff. Like, you'll be at a place, you'll be like, John said this. I'm like, but you heard that one time. Like, how do you do that? Because I'll be like, how do you do this? Because I, I was there. I, didn't. <laughs> I listen um, with the intention to learn. I don't listen just to listen. I want to learn. I, I want to understand. When, when you're around greatness, mm -hmm. there's a, I, I bring myself all the way down. Yeah. And I'm almost childlike, you know. And I'm and I'm listening intently, and I'm and so a lot of times I'm taking notes too, but sometimes I'm not. But I, I remember I just because if it hits me, it hits me. I mean, yeah. just little things like, hey David, you got to keep success and failure together. Yeah, like that has stuck with me now, and it will be with me for the rest of my life. Yeah. I didn't have to write it down, but it made sense. Like, wow, I've had failures in my life, but they led to successes. I've had successes in my life, and they led to failures. So I had to keep it together. So wow. I just. I just listen intently. That's yeah. that's big. That's that's a good lesson too, because so many people they run from failure. It's mm -hmm. like, man, I don't want to fail, but like, yo, they, you, you got it. So can you expound upon that? Yeah. Like, okay, success and failure, them being them being one. Yeah, you know what he called it was he called it success stabilizers. Mm -hmm. He said you can't have one without the other. So if you do, he said you'd be messed up. He said if you have success with no failure, you, you're messed up because now you don't really know. If you're really a success, yeah. because how, why did they call Muhammad Ali the greatest of all time? It's not that he never lost. Yeah. He lost quite a few times, but because he experienced failure and he was able to come back from that failure, yeah. that's why we consider him the greatness. And obviously the fact that he said it every single yeah. day yeah. to anyone who could listen. Yeah. Right. So success stabilizers. When you talk about power, you got to have accountability. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot of power, no accountability, that'll get you in trouble. Yeah. He said money, generosity. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot of money, no generosity, that'll get you in trouble too. Success, failure, keep it together. I look at it, and this is what I, this is what I taught John. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, I just said it. I just <laughs> said it. I didn't teach him. I didn't teach him. But this is what I said. I said, you know what, John? It's like, it's like a coin. Yeah. You know, a coin has heads and has tails, right? If I if I gave you a coin and it had two heads, you would think it was a counterfeit. Yeah. If I gave you a coin and it was two tails, you would think what? It was a counterfeit, counterfeit. too. Yeah. So you got to have both. So every single day, that's all you're doing. You're just flipping the coin. And sometimes it's going to land on heads. Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's going to land on tails. And guess what you do? You just keep flipping. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's strong. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, I like that because that's universal, too. Like, that's not a... You know, I talk about building a diverse business, but it's also like that is not just an African American thing. That's just mm -hmm. not a Caucasian thing, or, right. or Asian, or Hispanic, or Latin. I mean, it's like you know, everybody wants to become more, yeah. and so I think I think for a lot of people is like I have a lot of people that hit me up. They like, man, I want to be a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, have you motivated yourself to do something? Right. <laughs> because it's to your point earlier. It's like, look, if you can't motivate yourself to go do anything, what gives you? What it's like? What gives you the right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and that's what I think about in, in businesses. Like, if I haven't gone through any challenges. 
what gives me the right to talk to you about how to go through a challenge? Like, how can I tell you how to bounce back if I've never bounced back? And, and that's the piece of the experience that I think would make it counterfeit because if you don't know how to teach somebody, hey, yeah, I was making some money and then, you know, it didn't go good for a little while. Mm -hmm. This is what I was able to do. And that's one of the things you really helped me with um, when we first met was like money management. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I was like, you know, you start making more money you've ever made before and it's like, oh, no, it's not time. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you two questions. One, what is the worst <laughs> decision you made financially, like a purchase or anything like that, biggest mistake you made? And then two, like how, how have you corrected? Because um, you, you're probably one of the best that I know when it comes to what to do with your money, but you still have really nice things in your life. So, mm -hmm. like, what's that process? Yeah, you know, and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it was because I know exactly what it was. <laughs> um, but to the person that says they want to become a motivational speaker or they want to become successful, a lot of times I'll tell people you haven't failed enough. Hmm. You haven't you haven't experienced enough failure. You need to go fail some more, yeah. and that'll really give you something to talk about. Okay, <laughs> but but my my I mean. It was buying my first home. Okay. I was, this is 2011. Mm -hmm. The mentor of mine at the time said, David, it's not time. Yeah. I didn't listen. Hmm. So I went and bought it. And my credit wasn't all that great, but I was cash rich. Mm -hmm. So I put a lot of money down. I actually put, it was a million dollar home, and I put a little over $400,000 down. Wow. All right? Because I said I wanted my mortgage to be really low. Right, mm -hmm. so I go in this house, beautiful home, million dollar home, fifty four hundred square foot. I mean, it's just incredible. And then I realize, you don't have any furniture. <laughs> it was the funniest thing ever. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute, yeah. it didn't come with furniture? No, it, it didn't come with furniture, David. And you can't go to Ashley, no, and put you know that type of furniture in a million dollar home. So now I got to go to the high end stores. That was another quarter of a million dollars. So now you just took six hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars cash, and put it into something that was not going to make you any money. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it was it it became it became a challenge. I mean, obviously, I still have the home today. It's paid off and everything, but it did become a challenge at one point where I had to do a refinance yeah. on that home. And it was it was that was I would say was the the worst purchase that I made. Now. I did a lot of home meetings in it though. Yeah, for right. Sure, I was yeah. like, "Hey, listen, I'm gonna make some money back from this, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from this house." But that was that was the one. Yeah, that yeah, was the one. That was one. Mm -hmm. So, so would you recommend people like now? All right, hey, you go buy a house because I remember we, we talked last year and he was, you literally told me the same thing. Like, hey, yeah, go get one. But then, what kind of furniture you gonna get? I'm like, yeah, you're right. All right, let's think about this a little bit. So, would you like to an entrepreneur that's coming out? Because that's one of the things that most people want. It's like, yo, let me go buy a house. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend? Jumping into that right away, like, what's your philosophy when it comes? No, to no, I, I would. If you if you buy the house, any any property that you buy right now has got to make you money. Mm -hmm. It's got to make you some money, and uh, unless you you know you're starting a family and you need the space, I get that. But if you're buying a home right now, I would highly recommend let it be a rental property, let it be an asset versus you turn it into a liability because you're living in it and it's not giving you any money back. Yeah, um, and then. Get the house you really want. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Maybe yeah. you maybe you get the house. It's a nice house right now, and you you get other properties that you can now rent out, and you're building your real estate portfolio, and then build your income up to where you can really go get the house that you really want. I could have bought a ten million dollar home, fifteen million dollar home, but I'm smart with what it is that I'm doing, building. Yeah. And when it's time, then yes, we'll yeah. we'll go ahead and get that done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's talk about cars for a second. Cash or finance? Or lease. What is your thought process on that? Like, all right, cool. I got four hundred thousand dollars. Do I just go buy a hundred thirty thousand dollars car cash? Like, what's? Have you ever done it before? And then what, yes. what do you think? Okay. Do yes, you think? I have. I've done both. Um, me personally, and I'm, I've heard so many different yeah, yeah. trainings on this. Some people say buy cash. Some people say lease it. Some people say, all right. For me, I I would I would finance the car. Yeah. Right. I, I would I, I would I would put a certain amount of money down. Uh, the note. Make sure it's manageable. And here's why. I, I, I switch cars. <laughs> I've had like six Rolls Royces. Yeah. You know, I just, I like the new ones. You yeah. know what I mean? So, so if, I, if I have it for a couple years, three years, and I want to trade it in, I can do that, get a brand new one. Yeah. My note stays the same. I don't have to put anything down. Cars are not, I like them, but they're not that important to me. They're not right. part of my plan of building wealth. Right. So I would never want to take cash, so much cash, and tie it up into a liability that's not making any money. 
I want to have my most of my money in investments. I want to have most of my money in my charitable contributions. That's that's not not going and paying cash for yeah, cars. Yeah. I, I did that before. I did that yeah. for my Bentley. I did that for my Lamborghini, and I learned. Yeah, not yeah. to do that. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I think when I was thinking about it, really, when I thought about it, it was it was deep. It was rooted in childhood fears, though. Because right. let me buy this so nobody could ever take it away. Like right. that's you know we, we you don't. You don't come from a lot. That's what people start teaching. Like, all right, well, listen, you need to buy something so you'll never lose. It's like, well, you know, you can sell it. Yeah, you know, like exactly. if you buy it and something goes wrong, yeah. you can lose it yeah. by selling it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Yeah, right. but I, I know that's my thought process. I was like, man, really? All right, but it, it really makes sense because like you're literally putting it now in our business. We can we we're able to monetize mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. lifestyle and things of, of that nature. However, yeah, that's a lot of money to dump into yeah. a car. You know. Yeah. Um, Network marketing is a, is an incredible business. Uh, congratulations to you, by the way. You just started your own. You know, Thank shout you, sir. Out to that. We'll talk about that in a little <laughs> while. Uh, but twofold question, right? What is one thing you love about network marketing? What's one thing you hate about it? <laughs> well, the one thing I love about networking is people. Yeah. <laughs> and the one thing I don't like about network marketing is people. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, nah, I don't want to say I don't like people, but the biggest challenge in building your network marketing business is going to be people. Yeah. And your ability to to lead yourself and your ability to lead so many different personalities. Yeah. And one of the one of the one of the challenges that I've faced is wanting to maintain great relationships with everyone. Right. And it's impossible. Yeah. At some point someone's going to be upset with something you said or did. Someone's going to look at your life and if you're not perfect if something goes wrong in your life you know i went through a very tough time a few years ago and i saw leaders that i worked with and helped really turn their backs on me and it just i was i was like wow it was my it was like my first time watching the world not love david yeah and and it it was it was tough to watch it was it was tough because i i kind of stepped out of it yeah. And watched myself go through that, mm-hmm. and I said, I said, wow, I really saw people for the first time. Yeah. Um, but here's the deal: you've got to love people mm-hmm. to win in this industry, because it's, it's so much sacrifice, it's so much pain that you're going to have to pour in in order to get to the very top. And if you maintain that love, regardless of what you go through mm-hmm. with relationships, regardless of what people do, what they say, um, you got to maintain that love for them. Yeah. 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 I agree. You 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 mentioned something about um, leadership and why it's important in business, and you said that it's not it's not just something to come build a business, but not everybody knows how to put together the environment, the mm-hmm. culture, mm-hmm. right? What what are some keys that you found when it comes to like, all right, listen, I'm going to be intentional about creating a culture. Yeah. But what are some things that you look to do? So, I, I think that has a lot to do with first of all who you are yeah. as a leader, the values that you have, that you've developed, the characteristics that you have mm-hmm. as a leader. So, the culture has to have those two elements that we talked about earlier. Yep. The, is there a lot of belief in this culture, mm-hmm. and is there a plan? Is there a leadership growth plan in this culture? Belief is what's going to attract people, though. Hmm. Yeah. Right. What 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 are you speaking? What is your organization speaking? Yeah. All right. What are you seeing every single day, and what's your organization seeing every single day? Yeah. And then, what's the emotional state? The emotional state of your group, in my opinion, has to be one of love and gratitude. Yeah. Love and gratitude. If you have those two elements, that call, it is it is going to create a culture within your organization that there's so much belief in there. There's so much you know, excitement and enthusiasm for the future. They're talking about what's going to happen. They're speaking about what's going to happen. But then there's certain things you put in place to develop leaders. So there'll be retreats that we do. There'll be certain trips that we'll do. There, yeah. you know, a book of the month, audio of the month. You know, one of the things that we do in our company, we, we have John C. Maxwell come on once a month yeah. to do a training for the entire company. Which is not cheap, I can guess. No. Okay, yeah. At all. <laughs> but that's part of the investment. I mean, mm-hmm. the call he did just the other day mm-hmm. was worth it was worth every single dollar. Yeah. And it was literally 40 minutes of him talking. It was, it was worth every single dollar. So that's all part of creating that culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then here's the deal. you got to have a winning culture. 
Yeah. So results have to be there. Yeah. And that's why it goes back to who you are. The results that I've been able to create over the last few years obviously attracts people. And then now start helping other people get those results. People are now attracted to those people. And it's like, if I work with him or if I work with her, I'm going to win. Yeah. If I'm in that company and I really lock in, then I'm going to succeed. And that's the culture that we have. Yeah. No, I love that. That's, that's important. When, when you talk about the culture, so I, how do you balance this? Because, you know, like we play basketball together, right? And you're competitive, right? Mm -hmm. But in business, it's very easy to get competitive and try to compete against people. And, of course, you know, science getting rich, he talks about it. You know, you get, have two planes that you can win on, a plane of competition or a plane of creation. So how do I how do I balance this drive of, like, yo, I want to be the best. I want to be better. I want to do better. But at the same time, it's like, I have to celebrate this person. I'm really competing. Like, <laughs> like what's that? Like, how do you balance that dynamic yeah. in, in business when it is, I mean, to an extent, even, like, Michael Jordan, one of your favorite you know, yeah. you know, athletes of all time, was really competitive. Yeah. You know, one thing I, I did to, to fight against that, because you have to fight against it, I would go out of my way to celebrate other people hmm. that had absolutely nothing to do with me gaining financially. And by me doing that and working that muscle, it actually just dissolved the need to compete with someone else. Now, do I compete? Absolutely I do. But I compete with the 50-year-old David. Hmm. That's who I look at. You know, 39 today, and I look at the 50-year-old David, and I said, man, the guy's incredible. That's who I'm now competing with to get to, to yeah. be that person that I see at 50. And then before I even get there, I would already create it the 60 year old David. I would already create it the 70 year old David. So you do compete, but you're not competing with someone else. Because if I have to compete with someone else, now what I'm, I'm setting a limit to how well I can do. Wow. Because it's based on what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I don't want, God is not going to bless me based on what someone else is doing. He's going to be, ble he's going to bless me based on the desires that I have mm -hmm. for myself and the goals that I have for myself. So I'm not going to limit myself based on what someone else is going to do. And the world is big enough. Yeah. And what I mean by the world is big enough is that God is big enough to bless you yeah. and also bless me. Mm -hmm. And if you lose, my job is to encourage you. Yeah. If you win, my job is to what? Celebrate you. Yeah. So either way, wow. either way, I should be some sort of resource to you. Yeah. You know, if you're winning and maybe I'm not winning right now, I don't look at you like you're better. I just say, man, if Justin can do it, then I, I can do it too. You're a source of inspiration for me. Yeah. If I'm winning, right, and, and you're not winning at this particular time, you can look at me and say, all right, if Dave can do it, then I can do it too. And I pull you along and say, no, just absolutely you can do it too. The sun doesn't shine on everyone at the same time. Hmm. Yeah. It doesn't. There's 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 a part of the world right now where the sun is up over there. We don't have the sun right now. Yeah. But guess what? When we go to bed and we wake up, we're going to have the sun. Yeah. So you have to just understand that and not not compete. I've, I've seen people do it. Yeah. I want to be happy while I'm winning. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be stressed, worried about what this person has or they have a bigger car, they have a bigger home. Or, yeah. Because guess what? There's always going to be somebody better than you. Yeah. Hmm. All right? Jeff Bezos? There's somebody better than him. Yeah. Elon Musk, even though they have him listed as the richest man in the world, mm -hmm. trust me, there's somebody out there that's <laughs> laughing and saying he's not yeah. the richest man in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially in Dubai. They say it all the time. They say it. They say it's they say not it close. It's not it, possible. Right. I mean, it's not. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's what it is. You, you told me one time that one of the most... What, what, the, one of the most important things for a leader, or the most important thing for a leader to do, or one of the skills for them to have is the ability to identify potential leaders. Yeah. What are some things you look for when you're identifying leaders? Yeah. I have my top five. Mm -hmm. You know, there are many characteristics of, of a great leader, uh, but I, I have my top five. And number one is character. Yeah. And character is, is how they respond in the face of adversity. What have they gone through? Yeah. You know, I can't really consider you to be a leader unless you've gone through some stuff, you know, uh, gone through some pain and being able to overcome it. Uh, two is integrity. Mm -hmm. Can I count on your word? Like, if you say you're going to do it, yeah. can I take it to the bank and know that it's already done? Mm -hmm. Do you have a positive mental attitude? Uh, positive mental attitude is not that you bury your head in the sand if something is wrong, but you bring the right energy yeah. to the problem. Mm -hmm. we, got the, we got the challenge, yeah. right? But are we going to bring the right energy to this challenge? Or what did, what, did, what did John say? Are you the bucket of water or are you the gasoline? Yeah. 
right, mm-hmm. to, to the fire. I, I want to be that bucket of water to, to douse it out. Yeah. I'm coming, but I'm coming with the right energy. And then you got to have the right work ethic. If I see someone who's lazy, who's inconsistent, they're not leaders. Leader, leaders are consistent. Yeah. Leaders work hard, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. They do it and do it and do it until the job gets done. And if a person doesn't have that quality, I can't teach that. Yeah. I can't teach activity. I can't teach you want. Yeah. I can't <laughs> teach you yeah. get up. Mm-hmm. That's got to be something that's on the inside of you that you bring out. It's on the inside of all, all of us, but you've got to, you, that's what you got to come to the party with. Yeah. And then last but not least, and this is a big one, I need you to have a pleasing personality. <laughs> that's a fact. I do. Yeah. I don't consider you to be a leader. Uh, I don't care how much money you have. I don't consider you to be a great leader if you don't have a pleasing personality. If mm-hmm. you're rude to people, if you put people down, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't get with that at all. Yeah. 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 I, I I talk about making the climb as an entrepreneur, right? And and I remember one time we talked about success, um, and then maintaining it. Is is there once you become successful at a high level? making a certain amount of money, is there a certain pressure to now stay there, mm-hmm. to, to, to continue to win? Like, have, have you faced that at yeah. all? If, if there's pressure, then you really don't know how you did it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, have, I feel no pressure to stay at the top because there is no top. <laughs> there is no top. Yeah. I mean, at one point you thought 30 grand a month was the top. Yeah. At one point you thought 30 grand a day was the top. Mm-hmm. But there's no top because there's always more. Yeah. So my ability to dream, my ability to have a vision, a bigger vision, my ability to write down goals and see the future and speak the future, uh, that's what keeps me going. It's not the pressure of, oh, I've got to stay. I don't want to stay anywhere. Mm-hmm. I want to keep growing. Success is a moving target. Yeah. What you think is success today is not what it's going to be tomorrow. Yeah. So you've got to just keep that in mind because if you think, man, if I can just get there, I'm going to be happy. If I could just get there, then I'm, I'm I've reached the very top, and and you have it. There is no top. Yeah. I Sorry to break it to you. Yeah, yeah. I love that. You know, some people have this philosophy like, listen, you don't mix you don't mix your faith and in, in business. Mm-hmm. Um, you but you 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 don't you obviously don't operate in that manner. You're like, listen, right. this is me. This is David. Right. Like, how, how do you get to that point of like, you know, listen, this is I'm gonna I'm gonna include this in everything that I do. Like, how how do you? When did you make that decision? How, how did you get comfortable to do it? Because a lot of people, you know, they, they tell them, like, yo, don't do it at all. Yeah. To be honest, just it's I'm aware of my my flaws. Yeah. I'm aware of the humanity of who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it would be dangerous of me to take credit for what God has done in my life. Mm-hmm. Um People, people do say that, say, Dave, why do you always talk about God? And I don't talk about God because I'm perfect. I talk about God because I'm imperfect. Yeah. And I and I want people to understand that the reason why I am where I am today is because of him. And if you plug into that, yeah. then he can get you to where it is that you want to go. Because there's a fine line between motivating people and manipulating people. And I think when you start to take the glory and you start to take the credit for what has happened in your life, you can move into that lane of manipulating people where people think, I've got to be with David for me to succeed, or I've got to be with Justin for me to succeed. No, David and Justin are examples of what's possible if you do this, this, and this, and this. All right? And one of the this is that you got to do is you got to lean on him. And and I will always do that Mm -hmm. uh, for the rest of my life. I'm not not ashamed of it whatsoever. You know, you can't mix faith and business. Well, my business is faith. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know how I can separate it. Yeah. Yeah. You, I've learned, you know, empathy is something I had to really work on. Like, you know, <laughs> not that I don't care, but it's like, I would, be, I would hear people stuff, but okay, I get it, but keep getting through it. Right. <laughs> but you, you have a, a high level of empathy for people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've even been like studying it more because I, I was like, you know, reading examples of Jesus when like right before he healed somebody or before he raised somebody up, resurrected somebody, he would cry with people and stuff. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm thinking in my head, like, if I had the power, though, like, why would I be crying with you if I, it's like, you'd mm-hmm. almost be like, hey, watch this, hey, wipe your tears, watch, mm-hmm. watch this, right? But mm-hmm. he didn't do that. He was like, listen, I, I feel what you feel. Yeah. How have you been able to develop empathy when working with people? And sometimes, you know, they're going through different things, whether it's a loss or mm-hmm. lack or just things not working out. How have you been able to develop that 
as you're leading people? I think it's to not forget. Yeah. I think it's important to not forget where you came from. Mm -hmm. So I remember the twin size bed, you know, at my yeah. dad's at my dad's house. I I remember the fifty dollar child support letter. You know, I remember that. I remember sleeping in my car at uh, in front of hotels after my, my team would drop me off after I did a meeting and and I would go in my car and sleep there. I, I remember running out of gas on the streets in Houston mm. and having to scrounge up change and walk to a gas station and get a cantina and bring that gas back and pour it back in the car. I remember all that. So when I see someone who is in that situation, whether it's better or worse, I can always go back to... David, at one point, you were here too. So I can empathize with them and then encourage them. I don't leave, I don't stay at empathy, mm -hmm. right? I started empathy so I can get buy-in, yeah. right? Because you don't get buy-in from people unless they, they know that you understand where they're coming from. And then I go into encouraging. And I encourage with my story. That, hey, listen, I've been there. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. You know, it was painful. It was hurtful. But look at what happened. Yeah. And let me show you what I did. Hmm. To 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 change my situation, so it's easy. It's not hard. Man, I hope y'all getting taking some notes on this thing. This is like a whole bunch of formulas all in one, right? We're, we're talking about another formula you got too, mm -hmm. but forgiveness—that's a big thing too. Right. You know, can, can you can you break that down? Because you taught me about that. Because I like you know naturally I'm a, I'm a, like a petty person, like you know, like I have <laughs> naturally sprinkles, sprinkles of it. You know, it's it's been developed over past the years. <laughs> I have a unique set of skills, uh, but. Um, forgiveness was a thing that really for me it was like you feel like you got it and they can sneak back in there again mm -hmm. right and so like keep first of all keep, let's talk about it because some people don't even know what I'm talking about so you talk about forgiveness when it comes to even setting goals but also who you are like you break that whole process yeah so there's a formula for believing mm -hmm. there's a the, the mechanics for believing and it's found in the Bible uh, mark 11 24 whatsoever things you desire when you pray Right, believe that you receive it, and you shall have it. So that is the formula right there. Mm -hmm. So when I when I desire something, I first must speak it. Then I've got to see it. Then I've got to receive it. Receiving is emotional. Mm -hmm. It's not physical because it says I receive it, and then I will have it. So having it is physical. Receiving it is spiritual. Yeah. But the very next verse it says, and when you stand praying, forgive. Right. So basically, as you're saying these affirmations, yeah. I'm gonna need you to forgive. If you have ought against a brother, yeah, you need you need to <laughs> you need to yeah. you need to forgive them, so your father can hear you. Mm -hmm. So when I read that, I said, "Wait a minute! This is the only thing that stops belief from working. Hmm. This is this is the holdup right here, David. All the things that you've been asking for, all the things you've been speaking, they're held up because he can't hear you because you still have." A challenge with this person over here. Wow. Yeah. So what I did what I did was I developed this ability to make the phone call. Okay, talk about it. Yeah, that. to make the phone call. You offended me. Mm -hmm. You hurt me. Yep. I have to forgive you, but I'm gonna call you. And I, so then I so when I call you, I say, hey, listen, Dave, listen, man, I forgive you for all the stuff you no. did. Okay. <laughs> Hey, man, it's all forgiven. It's no. all good. I let it go. No. So we good. No. That's not what you do. Okay. Because a lot of times that person is hurt too. Mm -hmm. A lot of times from that person's lenses, you did something. Right. Or maybe you didn't do something. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had a lot of people upset with me because maybe I didn't defend them yeah. in a particular situation. Uh, they were lying about something and I didn't defend them. I've actually had someone actually have a fallout with me about me not lying for them. Wow. Yeah. And, but I had to call them and say, listen, for my part in our relationship not working out, I'm asking for forgiveness. I, I, I'm asking, That's a good I want you, I'm asking for your forgiveness and I apologize for anything that I've done. And when I, every time I've done that, God has released a blessing. Uh, the part that I've played. Yeah, the part yeah, that I've played. You, 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 pra you practice right. it right now? <laughs> the part that I've played. <laughs> All right. Now, I, you would hope, I you would hope that that, I played. Okay. that soft answer yeah. would turn away wrath because yeah. that's what it says, right? But yeah. they may not mm -hmm. reciprocate it and say, you know what? For my part, I'm sorry too. Yeah. You know? And, and 
when I've done that and that person has reciprocated it, I, I've, I'm good. I've, yeah. I've released it. And now it's going to be on them if they don't release it. Right. Yeah. You know? yeah that's not so. your problem anymore. Nope. Yeah. Not at all. No. I love that. That was a game changer for me. I mean, I remember when I when I really took that to heart, like I had a quantum leap mm -hmm. in life. And I was like, okay, you know. Yeah, now, yeah you, was, you were stuck. You yeah. were stuck at right around 10, 15 a month. Yeah. And then, I mean, it was like six months later, boom, yeah. it just, it 10 x Yeah, so. yeah for sure. And I was, it was a big deal. And I think that's something that, especially like, you know, it, it could be something recent. It could be something from childhood. It could be something that, you know, like I said, it even sneaks up on you. Because like now, because I understand it, I don't hold on to anything. But I realized there was, there was somebody I let, I just, now at this point, I just give it to him. But I had to let it go because it was only a little bit of money. But I'm like, you said you was going to give it to me. And it was like somebody that was known for not paying it back. You know, was, but I'm like, they called me in the family, so I'm going to just do it. And I was like, you know what? I literally messaged them. Right before we launch, I say, listen, man, <laughs> don't worry about it. It's all good. We have no problems. Because it's not that big of a deal. Because what I realized, what I was holding on to, it, it was way smaller than my future. Mm. And it's like, okay, if, if I'm willing to hold on to this, is it, is it worth what you're going for, Justin? Right. Like, is, is this problem that's already happened, this person's probably not even thinking about it anymore. Mm -hmm. Is that worth the goals that you've been writing down every day? Right. Is that worth all the stuff you've been speaking? Because you spend way more time writing the goals and doing the work than this little situation. So which one's more important to you? Yeah. And you know, one of the things that I think a lot of people struggle with is if, well, they, if I forgive them, does it mean I have to let them back in my life? Hmm. And no, it doesn't mean that. Forgiveness is not necessarily a restoration of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is I have no resentment or anger towards you. So if I don't, if I don't have any resentment or anger towards you anymore, yeah then you're, you're, you're free. Now, if there's a restoration of that relationship, that's because there's effort yeah. on both parties mm -hmm. to restore that right. relationship. But if there's no effort, then it's okay. You've moved on, they've moved on, and forgiveness is there. Yeah, I like that. Um, who would you say have been like some major influences in your life? Ooh, uh, my mother, uh, my father, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, Michael Jordan. Michael yeah. Jordan's been a big influence <laughs> in my life. I, I've never met him, yeah. but he is, he's inspired me to, to be great. Um, my very first mentor uh, in network marketing, my very first mentor, I've had, I had coaches, a uh, guy by the name of Holton, um, Ivy Hilliard, mm -hmm. um, who's a spiritual father of mine, Apostle Hilliard, um, Bob Proctor, yeah. uh, John C. Maxwell. Um, you know, it's been it's been quite a few people that have inspired me over the years, but uh, Mike Murdoch is another one. Yeah. But I would say those individuals, um, and I, I can actually break it down for you. Okay. All right, so Holton was the physical representation of what was possible. Yep. Bob was the mind, opening up my mind to the subconscious mind, the conscious mind, how all that worked. Um, Mike Murdoch was wisdom. Mm -hmm. Right. It's my only prayer that I have is, is wisdom. I pray wisdom and thanksgiving. Uh, Apostle Hilliard, though, faith, belief, number one. Mm -hmm. if, if I had to pick one out of everybody in my life, it would be him. This wow. made the biggest difference as far as who I am today. Faith and belief has just been huge. And then John, obviously, with leadership yeah. Uh, yeah. as well. And then Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, yeah. too, is another big one mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, was there a time you ever thought you weren't going to succeed or you doubted or, you know, because there's, there's people now, it's like, all right, well, Dave, you made so much money. It's easy to just believe and just <laughs> speak this stuff and just write this stuff. Right. Of course, because at this point, you're not worried about, all right, am I going to pay my rent next month? Am I right. going to pay my Was there ever a time where you doubted or you had some challenges and you had to get through it? And, and yeah. if so, how did you get through it? Yeah. It's a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It's a long time ago. So I'm, I'm going to go back there. Uh, it was probably 2000, 2007, 2008, mm -hmm. where I really started to have some doubt if it was possible, if it was really going to work out for me. But I stayed in personal self-development. Hmm. I never dropped that. Yeah. Justin, I never, ever, every day I would listen to something. I wasn't a big reader. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, yeah. but I was a big listener. So it was audio, it was Magic of Believing, Science of Getting Rich, the movie The Secret. It was stuff on YouTube. I would yeah. look up Bob on YouTube. I would look up Zig Ziglar on YouTube. I would look up Les Brown on YouTube. And I would just feed my mind over and over and over and over again. I didn't know if it was going to work, 
but I, but I knew I could not quit. That I knew. I knew that I could not quit. I had to keep going. I had to keep fighting. And eventually, God said, okay, you're ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Hmm. That's big, man. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's a big, that's a big, yeah. that's a game changer. Um, what's the most rewarding part for leading people for you? Well, the obvious is seeing their lives change. Yeah. Right? That's the obvious. Um, and I would say that has to be it. I mean, there's no other, there's no other way. Uh, another thing I can really think of is when you watch, and a lot of times you don't see it because you're in the picture with them. Yeah. It's when you look back and, and you see old pictures of them. <laughs> You're like, oh, wow. We have a lot of those. <laughs> right. I look real different. I don't even know who <laughs> like, is or that. Who is that? Right, right. Um, but you can see it in yourself, too, though. Yeah. You know? So I think that's definitely the most rewarding uh, part of, of, of being being a leader. Um, but it's it's challenging. I was about to ask you. It's challenging. It's challenging yeah. because there is, there is the pressure not to stay on top. Mm -hmm. And – but there is a responsibility mm -hmm. because – Leadership has to be earned. Yeah, you can't just because someone is a leader today to you doesn't mean they stay a leader to you right. tomorrow. And they're watching. They're watching everything you do, everything you say, and and you just got to be mindful of that and understand that being a leader is a great responsibility. Um, are you going to be perfect at it? No, you're not going to be perfect at it. But you should strive for perfection. Yeah, when it comes to leadership. Yeah. What do you feel like is the 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 thing that's been really challenging as a leader, though, like you know, obviously the wins are are good. Is, are are there any challenges? Because like, give me an example. Like, you know, we even talk. We look at stuff now. Like, you got like Jordan and Pippen. They had this great run, and then now you, you know, thirty years later, you know, you got Pippen saying all this stuff, and you know, Crazy. it's just like, bro, mm -hmm. we, we won championship. Just be quiet. Right. It was a, it was a dynasty. Like nobody had to know all this. So like. Mm -hmm. So I look at stuff like that. I'm like, okay, cool. If it can happen to Michael, it can happen to anybody. Right. 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 Uh, if it can happen to Jesus, it can happen to anybody. True. Right. So, but but are there any things that you've uh, you've you know experienced? Like, man, that's 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 a uh, that's a challenging part of of being a leader. Yeah, because you know you work with people and you know you you help people mm -hmm. and 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 you would hope that they would remember that. Yeah. And and cherish that. But you also have to remember that people are are into their self interest. Yeah. And the moment you don't serve that anymore, a lot yeah. of times you can become the enemy, mm -hmm. and that that is hurtful. Yeah. Because, it is. you know, I've seen situations where we've gone in and and helped companies and helped individuals completely transform their lives, mm -hmm. and years later you decide, hey, you know, you want to do something else, and now you're the, you know, you're the second coming of, of, of the devil or right, something, yeah. you know. But and it, it's, it's cool. You know, yeah, I mean, if I was with you, yeah. if I was still with you, I, I, you you wouldn't tell me. Yeah. But you probably still felt like that. So that's yeah. probably why our relationship had to end. So <sighs> challenging and challenges in leadership, that's what makes you a leader, though. Yeah. It's the fact that you do have those challenges. Mm -hmm. First three letters in challenges is C-H-A, last three. Letters is the N G E, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so change. You, you gotta. You're gonna have to have change. That's that's what a challenge does. It gives you an opportunity to change. Gives you an opportunity to actually grow. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's just what it is. Yeah, oh, I love it. Hey, what I what I love about you know just even watching your your process as a mentee is like you know I, I've seen it go from like you know the goal was a million a month and then you know obviously you wrote down a million a day and then for it to now go to where you know at this point now you're paying out millions. And mm -hmm. so it's literally shifted from like, all right, let me let me accumulate it, let me do this, and now, the 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 sh you shift to other people. At what part of your journey does is does, or I guess maybe I just talk about it for you. Like it was like, all right, cool, because a certain part is like, all right, I want to make ten thousand a month for me. Mm -hmm. I want to make twenty five thousand a month for me. At what point for you did it say, okay, all right, I want to do that stuff, but now I realize the the bigger game plan here is people. Yeah, that's when you become a great leader. Yeah. To be honest, when you can now focus your energy on helping other people, mm -hmm. right? And I wrote that goal down in 2013 that I was going to positively impact the lives of 1 billion people. Lord, when they see me, let them see you. When they hear me, let them hear you. So now you'll find out that money is not fulfillment. Yeah. Peri Listen to me. Money is not fulfillment. I don't care what anybody tells you. I don't care how, much, how, how many cars they have, homes they have. That is not what is going to fulfill you, ladies and gentlemen. What is going to fulfill you 
is what you do for other people. Mm-hmm. Period. And, but my bank account is happened. negative right now. Like, mm-hmm. My yeah. bank account is negative right now. So yeah. how do I? So because I, I want to. Because you know everybody sometimes it's like you hear that stuff. Like I, you hear this LA, uh You help everybody get what they want. You have everything you want. Right. And it's true. Very true. But but my, my bank account is negative yeah. right now. All right. Well, let's say you had a million dollars in your bank account. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Would you spend all one million today? No. You would probably spend the same amount of money that you would spend if your account was negative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Yeah. You don't spend money out of your account every single day. Mm-hmm. You can't because it's negative. No, no. <laughs> oh, even, if, right. even if it was positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even True. if it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's all a change in perspective. Like, wait a minute. Even if I did have $10 million today in the account, I wasn't going to spend $10 million. Right. So it's not the money. It's the feeling. Mm. It's the feeling of security that you think the money is supposed to give you. But you can have that feeling of security right now. Okay, how? Number one, what am I speaking? Right. Number two, I'm not seeing the negative bank account. I'm mm-hmm. seeing the future. I got a revelation on the word future okay. that changed my life. Talk to me. Future means the time or the period of time following the moment of speaking or writing. Hmm. So no matter what the current situation is, if the current situation is not what I want, I will not speak it. Because if I do, I just put that current situation into the future again. Wow. So I'm going to look at the current situation, understand what it is, learn from what brought me to this current situation, and then I'm going to create something else. I'm going to create what it is that I want in my account. I'm going to create the life that I actually want. And that's all I'm going to speak because I know me speaking that will change the situation. Got it. But if I speak the situation then I should expect that situation to stay because in the future is the time of the period of time following the moment of speaking or writing. So if you're in a negative situation right now, Mm -hmm. great, fantastic. This is an opportunity once again for God to prove that he's God in your life. Yeah. Get excited about it. Get pumped up about it Mm -hmm. because wallowing in it and being sad, it's not going to change it. Right. Yeah, it's true. Right. Get around people that are successful Right, get around people that are winning. That's why I love our industry. Yeah. Our industry, you can get around people that are successful for free. Yeah. And yeah. and in in your world, right, and and social media and mm-hmm. and influence mark, you got to pay. Yeah, for sure, a lot of money. <laughs> you got to pay yeah. a lot of money to, mm-hmm. to get close. Yeah. But in networking, you can get close to the top earner. And if they're a good person, yeah, they're gonna talk with you. They're gonna give you some advice. They're gonna recommend a book. And if you do that over time, things will change. They have to. They have no choice but to. Yeah. Yeah. I, what would you say to a person like this? Because there, there are some people like, like you said, like you, you get around a person that recommend a book, but it's like that's not the way I want to be mentored, right? Mm-hmm. But like, it's, for, I know, and I know you talked about this. Like, how how can I be mentored from somebody, but I don't really know them? Like, mm-hmm. uh, but I, I want to be, I want to have the relationship, I want to do this, but how how do I just okay, just go to them, just learn a book from yeah. them? Like, what, like how how do you how does a person say okay, and maybe I'm not close to that person yet, but how can I get the most out of this mentee yeah. mentor relationship? There's four different types of knowledges out there. You've got learn knowledge. Mm-hmm. So if once I identify a person that's a mentor that I feel is somebody I want to learn from, I am going to study their information, whether it's their books or their tapes, learn knowledge. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to go do the activity. So that's activity knowledge. I'm going to go do what's in the book. Yep. Don't just read the book. Yep. Do the book. Mm-hmm. Don't yep. just listen to the audio. Do the audio. When I heard the audio and they said, right, your goals down on a piece of paper and put them up everywhere and signs. And I, okay, let me go do what's in this book. Yep. And then I would start to model myself after that mentor, right? Whether it was I was going to speak like him, walk like him. I, and people say, well, why would you want to do that? Well, I look at Kobe and Jordan. Right. You know, Kobe rest his soul. You know, I look, I look at, man, like Kobe did what everybody wanted to do. Yeah. Everybody wanted to be Mike. Mm-hmm. But he didn't care. He said, I'm going to study every move. I'm going to walk like him. I'm going to chew gum like him. I'm going to dress like him. Yeah. And he did it to the yeah. T. And he ended up being. That's a good point. He, he's the only one. He's the only one <laughs> that did it. Yeah. And he copied it to the T. So, no, you model yourself, and then you become the teacher. When, when you do that, at some point, the mentor is going to recognize. Mm-hmm. You're going to attract who that mentor is. It's happened for me. Like, I was listening to John's stuff back in 2005. Right. I know, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I can call him and say, FaceTime, hey, John, how you doing? And, yeah. You know? So 
years and years of learned knowledge, activity knowledge, modeling, learning. Because I modeled his leadership style yep. to where now when he came around me, he was like, oh, this is this is one of my sons. This yeah. is this is someone who he, he understands the, the John way. But if I hadn't been studying his information for the last 15 years, he would have got around me and say, well, thank you. Thank you. But man, <laughs> no, thanks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Mm-hmm. So that's. You got to be patient. These guys are busy. Mm-hmm. Those women are busy. They don't. They're not waiting around for you to come around. So you've got to study. You've got to learn. You've got to grow. And I promise you, when that chance comes for you to be around that person, they're gonna say yes. I want to be around you because now you add value to their lives. Yeah. How, how did dating change? You know, from we were broke to. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. Since your life has changed, has dating changed? Or, and then I'll ask a follow-up question. Like, Because at this point, you do have a high level of success. How do you know or how can you tell when it's a genuine person? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually not stumped. But uh, listen, I think, I, think everyone, I think everyone is genuine. Yeah. You know, and, but they're genuine for what it is that they want. Yeah. You know, what it is that they want out of a relationship. I think it's just going to take time. Yeah. You know, it. Once you see and you and you pay attention, yeah. you see what this person is really here for, and then you know because I've I've been married in the past and you know it was a great experience. Yeah, it was a great learning experience for me. I, I believe the next time around I'll, I'll be able to kind of pinpoint some things that are necessary. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know for me work. I learned a lot of stuff about myself. Yeah, you know like going I was you know being married for a while and getting divorced. I'm like man, you, you always go. I always try to go through it and be like, what did I learn from this that can make me a better person? Because mm-hmm. Um, E.T. was telling me this when we were talking. He was like, Justin, it's, it's not great that you went through it, but it's great that you went through it because now you can relate to people in a different way. Like, I didn't relate to divorce before. That. I was like, listen, guys, just read the Bible. You know, <laughs> go, don't go to sleep when the sun is before the sun sets. You know, it's not a good. But when you're in it, you're like, okay, that's a little harder. It's mm-hmm. a little easier said than done. Right. You know, and so, you know, th- those challenges made me more empathetic to people because now I'm like, you know, just mind your business when it comes to people relationship because you don't know what happens. Mm -hmm. And so I I was able to learn that. I was able to learn stuff about how to handle situations when I was frustrated or irritated. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then also taking my time. You know, like, all right, Justin, you don't have to rush. You know, there's nobody's going anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, you take your time. So I think, you know, it's those lessons, the the wins and the losses, kind of like you said before, make you a better person but also make you a leader that can relate to people on a different level. It's it's a mirror. Not perfect. Yeah. yeah, it's a mirror. You know, and and you can a lot of times in in relationship relationships are, they're they're everything. I mean, they're your whole life. You know, and sometimes you fail in relationships, but it doesn't mean that you don't try again. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you won't have another opportunity. So you have to pay attention to what did I, what could I have done better? Yeah, right. So that when that opportunity comes along again. I can be better than I was the last time. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, relationships are, I mean, they're everything. Yeah, they are. They are. Especially that. Like, I'm definitely, like, you know, married type. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. that's definitely, like, my thing, like, the relationship thing. But it, it has to be, for me, I think it's, like, teammate. Like, I got to have a teammate. Yeah. Peace is a part of that, but teammate of, like, you know, hey, I got your back. We figured this thing out together. We're working it out together. Um, and, well, you know, it's so funny now. It's, like, you know, me and my former uh, partner. <laughs> We <laughs> we learned that we learned that learned today. It today. All right. right, but uh, was you know we have a great relationship now, mm-hmm. and I think you know there, there, there's a part in that of saying like, listen, you know maybe things don't work out, but you can you know for the sake of the children, for the sake of that relationship, can you still hang out mm-hmm. and you still do things together and still have something you know that can come out of it? For sure, you know. Sure. So that's big. Um, you recently launched a new company, so mm-hmm. shout out to you. Thanks, not, sir. Not a lot of brothers that do that, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think primarily because not a lot of people manage their money the right way. It's not mm-hmm. a cheap thing to do. Mm-mm. And so if, I, if I'm living, if I go buy the $15 million house, if mm-hmm. I go do all of these things, can I, you know, what, you know, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, what, would I be in a position to be able to do that? So, first of all, congratulations to you on that. Um, but tell, tell tell me about it, like, uh, I, well, I know about it. Tell the people about it, <laughs> what, what you're excited about with it and uh, re- really where you see it going. I'm excited about the chance, you know, yeah. the chance to do something big, mm-hmm. um, something incredible. Um, not anything that hasn't been done before, but but um, to be able to do it our way, Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. be able to do it in a way where, you know, God is at the center of what we mm-hmm. do. We love people and. 
you know, belief and leadership is a part of what it is that we do. And um, be able to just do business with good people, yeah, you know. I agree. Um, I remember January 1st, 2022, God just told me, he said, David, it's time. Yeah. And he gave me the word and vision. Mm -hmm. And vision has been a big part of my life, you know. Yeah. Vision, you say you perish for lack of vision. So envision you, envy you is we want the world to envy you. We want the world to envision you healthy and wealthy. We want the world to envision you the way God created you to be. Yeah. And we're gonna be bringing a new approach to business and health and, and wealth products as well. And it's exciting, man. I mean, God is just, from, from that moment that was just a thought to where we are today, to where, you know, I told you what we're, yeah. you know, paying out, mm -hmm. you know, the first week. And yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, amazing. it's tremendous to know that you now have your hand on the pulse, yeah. you know, to decide a direction in which it's going to go. Yeah. And that responsibility, I was excited for that responsibility. For 18 years, someone else was in charge of that. Yeah. Even though I was able to build great businesses and be very successful, I was never in position to be the one to actually direct the ship. Mm -hmm. And I think after 18 years of being in this industry and the experience that we've had, I felt like it was time. But what's so beautiful about the leadership style that we have is, yes, we're guiding the ship, but we've got a lot of great leaders as well, like yourself. We've got a lot of great people, Gary McSween, and I mean, so many people mm -hmm. that, that, that are helping us guide yeah, it. Absolutely. And and so it's, yes, you, you've got a captain, yes, you've got a general, all that, all that good stuff, but it's a team effort. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and, that's, and that's just how we lead. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, I just want to say, man, I appreciate you, bro. You know, like, you know, I don't, I don't take like, like you literally helped me to change my life. And not only that, a lot of other people as well. Yeah. I, in fact, this probably wouldn't be here without that. Cause it, I don't know if you remember, you reminded me in the middle of the process, like Justin, like, Hey, what you doing with your clothing line? Mm -hmm. You know, Hey Justin, you still gonna write your book. Mm -hmm. And that, that was so, that was so much the opposite for me because, you know, I was in a situation before it was like, Hey, uh, why are you writing? Why are you thinking about writing a book? <laughs> you know, why are you thinking about having a mixtape? Right. Why is your name new ATO? You're not the CEO. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and so like, I say that because even in the midst of that, there's things that I've learned from, you know, former, business partners, or I'm just going to start adding former to everything, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but that, that have allowed me to, to, to win in a, in a, in a, on, a, on a different level, but also looking at you, because I, I think I needed to find somebody that I could re resonate with their style of leadership, Right. but also, you know, like I could still be myself True. Uh, with people. Um, you, you, you would try to make a person grow, but you wouldn't necessarily try to change them, and I mm -hmm. think that's, that's, a, that's a, a nuance, because a person by growing, they should change, mm -hmm. but you're not trying to change. I'm not, yeah, that's it. And, and, you got and it. that's that's what's something I start realizing. It's like, okay, let me just help this person to grow. So I just want to say I appreciate you. Yeah. You know, I know uh, my kids are going to be grateful for our relationship. But yeah. beyond just the mentor, just being a good good, uh, good friend, a great brother to have. You know, he's just, he's just a great brother to have yeah. in the corner. No, I, I appreciate you too, Just because yeah. a lot of times people have gotten in between. You know, this type of relationship. Yeah. And, and you've never allowed that. Yeah, no. And you've never allowed that, and, and you've always honored me. Um, and and I, I just, I wanna let you know, I, I do appreciate that, because you don't have to, because yeah. you're big enough now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's what happens, a lot of times, you know, you may have a mentor-mentee relationship, and the mentee becomes the full-grown lion, mm -hmm. right? And you're a full-grown lion, but we don't run a pride. Yeah, no. See, a pride can only have one male lion <laughs> right yep so we don't have any pride here mm -hmm. all right we have we have a team yeah so a great team has to have other great leaders yeah. has to have other great lions so you you're fully grown yeah. uh your mane is is out there it's, it's growing <laughs> look at the studio yeah, and appreciate it. all the yeah. great things you're doing in and out of uh network marketing what you're doing with social media and influencing and digital marketing and Circle of CEOs. I mean, I I admire what it is that you're doing, and that's and that's that's exciting for me. You know what I mean? So when I saw your goal downstairs, I I say my boy gonna be on TV one day. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? we're good. That, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be that. good. That's and this is this is it right here. Yeah. I mean, you're, this yeah. is this is preparing you yeah. for what you wrote down. Like yeah. what you wrote down, mm -hmm. and then you starting this podcast yeah. is preparing you. Yeah. And one day you're gonna get that call. Someone say, "Hey man, you need to be on TV." Yeah. 
Yeah, I appreciate that. I received mm-hmm. that. Y'all hear that? You know what I'm saying? I received it. See, that's why the brother's good. You see how he speak life into you, man? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Listen, you can't go with a show, man. We got a ritual, you know. Okay, we what's the ritual? Show, we got to show people some kind of way. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to figure out what you should do for a Now, let me just tell y'all something. This is the only guy I know that's ever left a million dollars worth of watches <laughs> at a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> he said, just, I need you to go to the I hotel. I need you to go now. Said, what? <laughs> I left my watches. Which one? All, All of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is something simple. But I got you some air tags, okay? <laughs> so you can just put it inside these stuff so you always know where it's at at all times. So I got okay. the two of them, right? I didn't, even know, some, I didn't even know they sold that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then we just got some, you know, I know you're working out, so we got you some Envision You Color. Oh, color yeah, I appreciate so, that. Something simple, man. You know, just something sure. simple for you, but definitely use this. This is, this is going to save your life right here. <laughs> right. Right? Anything that's important, just add this to it, and you'll be able to track it on your phone. I right? got <laughs> So, but now, man, I appreciate you, bro. Uh, <laughs> tell us where they can find you, uh, the company envision you yeah. and um, anything last things you want to say to the people yeah i mean instagram obviously david imo nita i m o n i t i e um you can definitely find me there a lot of content that we put out is there and you know envision you we have uh distributors visionary builders all around the world um you can you can you can find any one of them and find out all about what we're doing here with mvu so yeah. yeah, it's going to be exciting. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Well, listen, y'all just got another play from one of the greats in the game. Uh, you know, we're going to call it now Billionaire. You know what I'm saying? We said it here first. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? Billionaire, David and Benitia. You got a chance to interview him ahead of time. But listen, I hope you go back and watch this so many times over. I'm going to watch it myself because I'm like, yeah, okay. I heard that before. I heard it a little bit different. Um, and I think that's what you have to really start doing is not, not just hearing information, but it's the repetitious information. And so this is one of the ones I want you to bookmark and really go through it over and over and over again because it is a game changer. But listen, you got a lot of plays when it came to leadership, belief, growing a brand, growing your business. All you got to do now is go run it. See you all in the next episode. What's going on? Listen, make sure you guys go to runtheplaystore.com. Get your official Run to Play gear. We talk about shirts, socks, jackets for everybody that's run to play all across the world. Are you ready? We're gonna run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come for nothing at all? But every day you just wanting it all. Do you know what it's like? Every day facing your fear, but believing that your blessing is near. Do you know what it's like? Growing up broken than most, but still being devoted.